When it comes to corn post-emerge residual herbicides, there are just so many choices anymore, it's kind of hard to sort through all those things. Well, we used to just think about, well, I could spray Banvel and Atrazine and I'll get a couple of weeks of residual. Yep. And that's what we thought a residual herbicide was post-emerge. Right, but see, back then we had a full rate of a good pre-emerge grass herbicide down. So all we really cared about post-emerge was you know, broad leaves and maybe a tiny little bit of grass. It, it just was whole different back a few years ago. Whereas today we've got all these Roundup resistant weeds and guys want to have something pre for broad leaves and something post for broad leaves and more residual for broad leaves because we've got a changing weed spectrum and we've really got to make sure we have perfect control in corn because that's the crop where it's the easiest to control weeds. All right, so you could use the standard grass herbicides, your Surpass, Harness, Dual, Outlook, and you can use them uh, for the most part up to about 11 inch tall corn, depending on what the labels say, of course. Uh, and that's one thing you could do, but instead of just talking about those products today, there's a lot of combination products out there that you may consider as well. We've had a lot of questions about this in particular this year because the HPPDs have gone down so much. You can buy generic Callisto, it's dirt cheap. You could throw that with a harness or surpass or something else and maybe a glyphosate and all of a sudden you got a three-way mix, three modes of action. That would work out really well, but there are other ways to do it that are just as or even less expensive. Well, when you think about the HPPDs, you hear products like Halex and Caprino and uh, now Resicor this year certainly gotten a lot of attention because the prices come way down and, and you've got don't multiple forget about, modes of action. Yeah, and don't forget about Acuron Flexi or even straight Acuron. So you got a lot of choices. We want to talk about those products in particular. All right, well, the market leaders for a number of years have been Sure Start and Triple Flex. And you've basically got Hornet, which is Python and Stinger, plus Harness or Surpass. Those have been good products and a lot of guys have looked at, well, I'm gonna put down something at a real light rate pre-emerge and then I'm gonna come back with a good strong rate of these early post-emerge to, to basically get the broad leaves under control that are already up yeah, plus but, get some residual. But here's the problem, Darren. You've got Stinger in there, which isn't that great to begin with. And then you've got Python, which is an ALS herbicide. So what good is that gonna do on ALS resistant weeds? Nothing. So you just don't have a lot of control, which is why Sure Start and Triple Flex have been so cheap. All right, so a better way to go has been putting the HPPDs out. Now, as we've talked about on the show over the winter, using HPPDs all by themselves is just a recipe for resistance coming in not very many years. In fact, some people have already seen a little bit of it now. But if you're using one of the HPPDs, many times you're gonna be using something that's gonna have two or even three products in it. Okay, so let's take Resicor, for example. It's basically the same thing as Triple Flex and Sure Start, except they pulled the Python out and inserted Callisto. Okay, so now you've got a combination of Harness or Surpass, whichever one, I mean, they're the same thing. Okay, so Harness and Surpass plus Stinger plus Callisto, well, that's a pretty good combination. You got three different modes of action that'll have activity on most Roundup resistant weeds. All right, Brian, another one that you had mentioned earlier was Acuron, and Acuron is, is fine, but it has a bunch of atrazine in it. And I like Acuron Flexi a little bit better uh, just to avoid that. And this is one of those things that we can get into a debate on if you'd like, but putting that atrazine out there post-emerge is fine in most situations, depending on your crop rotation. I like putting it in separate, that way I can control what it has, or I just use less of one of these products so I only put a half a pound of atrazine well, out you can and do spike that. Just cut your, Yeah, you can just cut your rate of Acuron if you want to go down that low. And basically either Acuron or Acuron Flexi, you're going to get Dual in there. You're also going to get Callisto, and then a new HPPD called Bicyclopyrone. With the Bicyclopyrone, we seem to see a little bit better activity on things like wild buckwheat, for example. It's just a little bit different product, although it's the same mode of action, it does have a slightly different weed spectrum than Callisto. One of the challenges this year though, Brian, is with the prices of these HPPD products dropping so much, some products are dropping, some are not. Some retailers are holding their prices and some are dropping to kind of match the market. And it's one of those things where you really have to start from scratch. You can't go into the season saying, well, I'm gonna use this because I did it last year. The price may be several dollars an acre more than something that could be almost the same product this year. Well, that's kind of what we look at with Halex. So Halex has really been the leader here in this market for probably the last three years, at least in the upper Midwest. Well, what is Halex? It's just dual Callisto and glyphosate. Well, you can mix your own now 
cheaper than you can go Halex. So it's very unusual because even up to last year, you could not mix your own and be cheaper than Halex. So we're expecting a price decrease going into next year with Halex, but for this year, it's priced just the way it's priced. Now, I, that's not to say it isn't a good product, and in terms of mixing and everything else, there are certainly some advantages to Halex. So you can still continue using Halex, but we just wanted you to at least be aware there are some newer options like Resicore and Acuron and Acuron Flexi that are all very acceptable as well. Hey, one other thing, and this is kind of hindsight here just a little bit. If you didn't put a pre-emerge herbicide down and you're coming in post and you say, well, there's already a whole bunch of weeds up, I'm just going to wipe them out with a one-pass approach, that's fine. You can kill the weeds that way. There's no doubt about it but there's certainly less yield. And when you look at university trials and even private trials that have been done, you're giving up yield if you're letting the weeds come up in your cornfields and not putting a pre-emerge herbicide down. So it's something that if you're out there doing it right now and you're saying, well, hey, I'm killing all the weeds that are up, hey, take a look at it on your farm, uh, put that pre down and then come back with these posts. You're gonna get way better coverage out of these post-emerge products, uh, plus you're gonna get more yield to boot. The main thing we're after here when we start talking about residual herbicides period is you've got to get to crop canopy. I don't care what crop we're talking about. And it does make a difference how many weeds you have out there, especially if you've got our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 